Builders hate change. It produces risk. It produces bad quality. It produces safety issues for us. Change is not good in our business, but it happens and you have to deal with it. Five concentric pentagons, each four stories high, created five million square feet of office space. But it wasn't enough. Now, Lieutenant General Brihan B. Somerville needed more. As big as Somerville has made this building, it's not going to be big enough. So he says, maybe we should put on a fifth floor. And the problem was they, they already had 40% of the roof was up at this point. There was no time to scrap the old roof. He just built the fifth floor over the top of it. When the fifth floor was built, he didn't inform Congress beforehand. He just did it. And when the War Department released um, the plan for that, it was simply called the fourth floor intermediate. Even with Somerville's last minute change, his crews completed the entire project in just 16 months. In January 1943, Roosevelt traveled to Casablanca to plan the Allied invasion of Europe with England's Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. And back in DC, the new headquarters of the US War Department fully opened for business just in time. And it was a wonder. Five concentric five-sided buildings nested inside each other. And thanks to Somerville, they now each had five floors. And at the center, a five-sided courtyard, of course. The Pentagon was at the time and remains today the largest low-rise office building at over 6.3 million square feet. From groundbreaking to you know, final completion date, 16 months, that's unheard of then and today. The Pentagon's floor space was three times more than the Empire State Building built a decade before. First, it was only going to be twice as big, which sounded like enough. But by the time Summerlow was done, it ends up being three times the size of the Empire State Building. You walk up to the face of the building, and it's, it's just encompassing. It, it fills your entire view from left to right. Part of the genius of the design is its efficiency. Starting from the outermost E-ring, and moving inward to A-ring, V-shaped corridors made the Pentagon famously easy to get around. Someone walking at a brisk military pace could move between any two points in seven and a half minutes. I'll give or take. I have tested the hypothesis, and you can get from one point in the building to another in just under 10 minutes, if you walk quickly. Lieutenant General Somerville, who oversaw the construction, was promoted the rank of general in 1945. By virtue of his kind of very colorful language and dynamic personality, Somerville is, you know, seen as one of the, the key figures in this uh, enormous war effort. Leslie Groves, the colonel behind the Pentagon's swift completion, was tapped to lead the even more urgent Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb. For the next three years, the Pentagon was the hub of global military operations. But when the war ended, most assumed the US military would drastically downscale. The Pentagon was destined for a civilian future. Roosevelt talked about it being in archives, and you know, other people, you know, suggested hospital. People uh, begin asking again, you know, this question that was asked before the war, you know, what in the world are we going to do, you know, with this Pentagon building now that the war is over? By 1947, it became clear that the Russian bear was not an ally, but a threat. Just like that, the Cold War was upon us. FDR's successor, Harry Truman, created the Department of Defense. With the stroke of a pen, the Pentagon had a permanent and critical purpose. It became very quickly the symbol for American might, and it still is today. I think the Pentagon represents this trinity of building, institution, and symbol. It's a building that's one of the true architectural wonders of the modern world. It's a symbol to this nation and others of American power and influence. And as an institution, it's the nerve center of the US military establishment.